From the home offices of Ash and Flow, this is Unbillable Hours, a podcast about professional services marketing. Stick around and listen to our insights, tips, and best practices to improve your firm's marketing and even your career. <laughs> Anyways, so so I'll, I'll start this here, shouldn't we? We just, uh, I feel like we should have recorded the last 10 minutes, but let's let's get into it. And, and yeah. welcome everyone to this this episode of Humble Abrows, where Ash and I wanted to a bit sort of as a follow up to our conversation with Luke from the previous week, mm-hmm. uh, discuss what some of the reasons we see or why we think uh, marketing efforts, let's say programs or campaigns, right, fail to deliver impact for the business. What are the what are the main reasons? for that and and ash you had a you had two good points there already just before i started <laughs> recording so we start talking to... about yeah we start talking about <laughs> stuff way before we record this is our yeah. you know our process of like oh coming goodness. up with ideas but yeah anyways uh, let's can can you sort of repeat that for the benefit of yes. the listeners? What, what are your points there why does stuff not work out um, so the whole thing is, mean, let's think about like actual market research, and I'm not talking about what uh, consulting factories produce as marketing research, where they like go in and into you know get surveys done and all that. No, n- none of that. The relationship holder with the client, with the part, uh, with the market, they are the first point of contact. They know what's going on. They have the full information of what the client needs. Uh, what the market status is and everything because they're on the ground and they're talking about it. Now, if they delegate a lot of this stuff to their teams, asking them to do things rather than working with marketing, or if they just, you know, like you were saying, Flo, uh, get some, uh, you know, fresh grad journalism, you know, or mm-hmm. English major or something and write these things, that doesn't quite work because then these people come to marketing and then they give the secondhand information to uh the marketers and already the information that you know <laughs> the relationship holder gives is secondhand information by the time it goes through these people and maybe another person and then gets to marketing yeah. the information is re- interpreted completely differently it's it's just like writing history <laughs> like i mean um at the end of the day it'll be like oh gold was found in atlantis and <laughs> the hell was atlantis <laughs> who knows kind of stuff you you need that direct relationship with the you know with the person on the ground and we get that they're busy we get that you know it doesn't work they may not have time to write these things but please make some time to just have an interview with the marketer or if you're speaking to any of these people bring the marketer into that conversation as we've said millions of times before it's always great to have for marketing to have a seat at the table and be involved in these discussions firsthand but if you're not doing that at least do this because otherwise what you're just going to do is find that your campaigns are not effective and what you're doing doesn't really make a lot of sense because yeah yeah you don't have to. I mean, I 100% agree with this, and I would fully agree. If, like, if you had said that that's the number one reason, like the primary reason why marketing efforts fail, I think that's exactly right. Um, let's drop the, the 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 jargon for a second, right? All this the verbiage around thought leadership and that stuff. Yeah. What it comes down to is, and I, and I think we discussed this with Luke a little bit. As you do consulting work, uh, you build up intellectual capital or property right you're thinking as a consultant how you think about problems how you think about solutions these types of things Mm -hmm. um that sort of springs into existence and if you want to be a good consultant you have to invest time into that and then honestly if you want to be a consultant who actually also does successful marketing all you have to do is to take that extra step and help get that thinking into a forum where it can be published but that means in other words, right, that you have to invest yourself, your own time, your own effort, not just into the actual creation of the thinking, but also the, in the, into the publication of it. And um, you, you can't delegate that away or or outsource it, um, and that will fail. So, if, yeah, I 100% agree, and I, I'll, I'll summarize it as, as like this. Number one reason why this stuff doesn't work yeah. is uh, the content 
production, so to speak, and everything that goes into it, like the market insight, like you said, right? The client insight, the actual expertise, all this stuff gets delegated because the professional is busy. So can't an agency write the blog post for us? And I've done this in the past. I've, I've built these models where you hire an agency, they get a content calendar, um, they... Uh, you know, they 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 draft some outlines, and some expert at some point in time approves of it, right? Then something gets written, and there's a review round, blah blah. It's not the same. It it leaves you with the end result where a 28 year 28 year old journalism major who really knows how to write wrote a very good, crisp, but also superficial article, which can get SEO clicks. Let's have which that. yeah yeah, which is SEO optimized and gets all kinds of viewerships, but. It will never compel a CFO of a, of a Fortune 500 company to think differently about how they run their business. That only happens if the director who works with these CFOs um, writes up a few points, you know, uh, about how to change their thinking, and then they can delegate that. Right? They, you can give it to someone to edit. You can obviously give it to someone to create social content and so forth. I feel like I'm reiterating a lot of the stuff you you already said, but I think that's that's one of the major points is you don't invest enough. Time and expertise. Yeah. Do we have a second? Do you have? Do we have another point um, on that well, end? Or I think the other thing that we need to <clears throat> focus on here is making sure that you have your crisp, cohesive message because this is the thing that can be lost when you delegate these things to other people. Like <clears throat> you cannot be all things and everything. And you cannot have like five, di you cannot have like 25 different priorities. And if they're all coming from your company, it's because your marketing is ineffective, which is usually because the, um, <clears throat> the, the relationship holder has told their, you know, subordinates and others, here's all the things that I want. And there's no one to like question them and like yeah. funnel them into the right direction. And this is a problem that happens a lot. Like, um, okay, some companies have gotten it a little better in that they do not send competing messages. That's good. But when you're such a large company, you still put out a lot of crap that, you know, not every not everything's fully aligned. And the other thing, the bigger issue is not about them not being fully aligned. It's about the fact that you give 25 different messages. In one, on one end, you say, hey, we need to be so sustainable. Let's move to green energy. Let's focus on this and let's focus on that. And the next minute, you'd be like promoting a company that basically tells you, oh, by the way, let's keep, you know, let's keep supporting these coal enterprises. We, and we'll, push, we'll push the date to move to green later. And yeah. they both come from the same place and same source. And you're just like, well, that's because you've got competing priorities. And yes, markets are complex, needs are complex. Yeah, but to build this whole thing, you need like, you need like, a way bigger narrative, and that narrative cannot come if your priorities keep changing every like yeah. you know every year or forget a year every six months to a year. Think the world keeps changing. So rather than like talk about all these things, just talk about solvable things. Solvable things, and also which which you know they they are related to your business. And I think to, to your point of these conflicting priorities, maybe maybe we can make that our number two, other than just investing or committing to marketing and investing your own time and effort into it as a, as a consultant on the business side. Next thing is you have to be ready to make some strategic, i.e., difficult decisions. Right? You can't have the cake and eat it. There have to be decisions around. You know what's the market segments we are going to market to? I, yeah. Like, there's a difference. You can also serve others, but what's the who are we going to target with our marketing? What's the story there, and and is there some consistency in the messages? I.e., which messages probably we should just stay away from, right? If ninety percent to your point, if ninety percent of your business comes from working for for coal companies, uh, maybe it's not the greatest idea to to try your hand at sustainability messaging instead of try to greenwash everything because everybody probably can see through that and you're there's also the risk of just turning off your own employees right because it just feels don't be dishonest fake and fraud. yeah <laughs> thanks I mean, that was it, the it, word yeah. yeah it's fine like look uh while we have our own personal opinions which we're not getting into on this podcast but on another one you will hear that um there are it's okay if your firm 
is not doing something that's so great that can't hire employees for you know from a wide net yeah it's it's okay but it doesn't make it okay that you lie to a prospective and then get them in and then yeah. they start rebelling within your own phone that is just yeah, yeah, yeah. completely stupid i mean we but that gets we can like that goes down rant alley right we do have yeah. takes there as well on this entire sort of there are there are things like there there are purpose driven recruitment marketing campaigns and all these things which have their purpose sorry no pun intended and mm -hmm. they they can be effective for some firms and they can be utterly cringeworthy in other firms depending on how it's used in the context but i mean so second point is you know commit to marketing invest your time into it be ready to make some strategic decisions was our mm -hmm. second point um i think the the third the third one there then is to and and i don't know if you agree but i i seen too many efforts um uh being killed prematurely i think that's that's an that's a follow thing, through right? people, yeah just just follow through yeah, yeah people don't play people don't play the long game which marketing you can drive short-term results and, and you should with certain techniques but mm -hmm. overall and especially in consulting and especially if you try to build your reputation by, through your expertise and by being helpful in these types of things they take time right it's not like you switch on a, a linkedin campaign and expect like the inquiries to come in three weeks later um and i see that a lot where where firms might have a sales cycle of on average for of like a long sales cycle, 120 180 days before they close a the project they will run yeah. some marketing idea or some test campaign for a month and then decide it didn't work and i'm like you're not even past the 30 day mark how can you decide it hasn't worked yet right and so that i think to me is, is is another biggie is to just not have the patience or i don't know the the stamina or to to have to make the commitment right to really test it and see it through up to a certain point right giving up too early is, is another yeah biggie there to me i think <clears throat> yeah no i <clears throat> that is something i will like i'll fully agree on do we have a third one though flow that that was my three right my, my fourth oh. one would be my fourth one would be close close to your heart probably is because it goes into measurement and metrics yeah. i think another one is not having not having clarity around what the success actually is right let's start um, let's start with this first of and, all, and i think i think three and four in that sense are related i don't know which one is the more important one right but let's make it a little more like prescriptive yeah. first of all set your kpis in a sensible fashion like i've seen kpis that's just basically that basically let's bring in the idea of thought leadership is just to create more thought leadership it doesn't really measure like the effectiveness of thought leadership it just says our knowledge generation capacity just needs to create more knowledge generation we need to do more that doesn't yeah. mean anything that's that's not how we go about it that's so set your effective kpi mapped to your clear you know clear identifiable priorities once you've got yeah. your kpi set use the information here that comes in not the data convert your data into meaningful information use that information to you know work with marketing and also set or adjust your priorities use that as a cycle so go go from point four back to point one and this only can come in if you have that kpi to information process yeah. if you just if yeah. you just set kpis just because you want that to be your salary or your professional indication then yeah you've got another thing coming yeah and i mean adding to that i think defining yeah. kpis and that stuff uh at some point in time i think it should be able you should be able to tie it back to business metrics right i'm not yeah. saying put like a dollar value to every blog post to do whatever, but there should be a clear yeah. correlation between what do we spend on this program, on this effort and how's the business growing. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I'm talking about incremental growth, right? If you get 10% growth with marketing switched on or off, mm -hmm. right. 10% growth will not be enough. Like there should be an, there should be an increment to that. Once you, once you start investing into, into marketing, that that's, 
probably a whole other discussion, but you should be able, you should be able to bring it back to business metrics at, at some point in time. And mm -hmm. um, if that is, if you have no clarity around how that might work um, and, and um, then it's, then it's even easier to lose patience, right? This is where points three and four might be uh, sort of connected or interconnected. Uh, yeah. Because I, I can quickly get the gut feeling of this is not working. Um, either because A, I have not been patient enough or B, I have, I have no actual way of measuring whether or not it's working, right? Because I never thought about it. Um, and so I kill it because of that, yeah. No, the measurement part definitely super important. So I think uh, we've got have, our... Go ahead. That's, that's number four, right? I, I think of a fifth one and I don't know if... Hey, you got you a agree. fifth one, okay. Yeah, I, got a, I, got a, okay. I got a fifth one. That's, that's the last one on my, on my list, um, which I'm not sure is complete. So I welcome uh, listeners to, to mail in which, which one we forgot. But another one I see, and that's more true for bigger firms and not so much for the smaller ones. But because of the, the patience is short, okay. success criteria are not clearly defined. There can also be a certain franticness or hectic, um, meaning that um, people try a lot of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, LinkedIn didn't work. Now let's try TikTok. Oh, TikTok didn't work. Let's revise our newsletter. Like you have suddenly you have a bunch of um, uh, initiatives going, <laughs> yeah. and that and that just drastically reduces the focus. And and there's high switching costs between you know channels and campaigns and all that stuff. So you're wearing out your team. They're spinning the wheels without any getting ever ever getting any traction. So. I guess lack of focus is my number five and the, the recipe for battling it, um, mm -hmm. I would argue is A, to, to stay focused, which should be easier if you are more invested, more patient, have a clearer definition of success. But mm -hmm. also if you work in a big place and, and you, have, I have, you and I have done this in the past, yeah. have a process going, and, and I think you even mentioned it elsewhere, have a process going to just decommission stuff, right? <laughs> Every once in a while, go in there and 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 kill a few programs of old who have either run their cause or they're not as not as effective anymore or you sometimes maybe it's even just because you you're bored of them whatever um but but do give yourself permission to celebrate not just starting new stuff and be all excited but also to kill some things i i think that you know people should eventually have every once in a while um a think about what to stop yeah. Uh, yeah, that that goes back to what you had in an earlier podcast where you said about every once in a while just pause, right, and reflect. Yeah, and it's, stuff it's it's and not kill. A few kill. It's, it, yeah, it, it's firstly pause, see what you're doing, then kill it if it doesn't make sense. It it's it's uh, <clears throat> it's almost um, counter to the point that don't kill things until they're on their course. It's basically that. It's 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 an addition thing. Think about it as a plant, okay. If it's just still taking time to grow, let it grow to a certain point. If it's already born its first couple of fruit and they're all terrible, then yeah. you kind of know that this is not really going to be the thing. Kill it. Do not don't don't go ahead and try and think that this will go. Or if you have the budget, you can keep it running, but don't make it like a visible priority kind of thing. But don't keep this running so long that it becomes a shadow organization threat kind of thing that you know that then becomes problematic yeah and i think i mean some someone and i i should give you credit but i forget who was someone someone brought us to my attention that apparently at google the company um they have mm -hmm. like a project graveyard so they make yeah. it the cost for celebration if you if you have like like in other engineering driven firms, you might have a patent wall or something and you get bragging rights and a cool yeah. place in the cafeteria if you have 15 patents. Google apparently does something similar where if you have three or four projects in their graveyard, that means that you've developed something which could have probably have been a significant business, somewhat successful, and then you stopped it because you had good reasons to stop it. I I'm not advocating your marketing team should have the same thing, but the, <laughs> the philosophy there I think is yeah. is good. It's not worth to trace every shiny object and do everything quite the opposite right it's less is more and all that stuff so maybe maybe that's a good cool one so i don't know that those are the five um we had prepared to a certain extent um any do you have any closing closing I, remarks I, I think our closing remarks should be the same thing that we always say in order to drive effective marketing your sales team who's basically the business in case of professional services yeah. and marketing need to work hand in hand. If they do not, you're going to have a disjointed thing 
your funnels will not connect and you basically sit there and think well marketing sales will sit there and think oh well marketing's really not doing their job what the hell's going on they're not the people who will bring you sales by the way they're just the people who will amplify your voice and make sure that you get the right messages across they're not the people who close their deal if if you want them to close their deal then they should come and work your job not the other way around yeah 100 percent agree and i would add to that i mean the the business being both the sales and sort of the business the other part they absolutely have to do is they have to nail the strategy right yeah the, the, the business strategy to go to market strategy if that doesn't exist um you, you you essentially have no fighting chance to to ever drive i mean i'm not saying you can't deliver marketing that yeah. does get results i'm just saying we'll never have a chance against market peers who have the strategy tightened up right mm -hmm. uh, they'll have a much easier choice uh, ch much easier chance of, of being i think we we had a guest on a while back jeff jeff mckay who who recently posted about this on linkedin and i like that a lot where he said yeah. Whenever firms run into marketing issues, the, the root cause of that often is um, very upstream, I think was the word he used. And the idea being the very same thing, you know, you guys got to figure out your business strategy, make the tough decisions. Um, and yeah, then then stuff will work out. That was great. Um, thanks for that, Ash. Yeah, that and, was a good uh, one. I think we feel like we can wrap it here, stop the recording, enjoy you guys weekend. enjoy your weekend when you get to it yeah uh and we'll speak to you next week um hopefully with with an interesting guest but uh we'll we'll tease that maybe a bit later on on mm -hmm. on the linkedin or somewhere else uh, can't say it just now um because it's not confirmed but we'll see cool speak soon and uh, happy friday everyone Thanks for listening to Unbillable Hours. If you want more, tune in next week. You know where to find us.